Good evening, and welcome to WCTV Sports, the show we call Off the Court. Each and every week, I sit down with Coach Bajoli of the Wareham Viking varsity team, and this is our third show in our season 2014-15. Coach, I hope you had a nice holiday off the court, but on the court, it's some good stuff and some bad stuff some to good, talk some about. Some good, some bad, but yeah, but a good <laughs> holiday overall. Good. And uh, I just got back myself from up north. And uh, Coach, let's start right in with uh, our opening game in the uh, South Coast Conference, uh, the Greater New Bedford Beer. Coach Boomer Rodriguez, young team, coming in against your squad. And um, he, uh, he plays you guys tough. Do you, do you throw... Um, a 1-3 at you early to pressure you guys that threw you off kind of in that? Well, it was more of this kind of helter-skelter man defense where yeah, they yeah. players up from behind, mm -hmm. actually, and you never could really get into your set offense. Uh, it's kind of a scramble. I couldn't see if they had a lot of rules <laughs> um, <laughs> or uh, they didn't seem to be following a lot of rules on defense. It was more helter-skelter, and it did take us a while. I think if we play them again, guess. when we play them again, I think we'll be better prepared. Right. I mean, they, uh, they all scored you in the first quarter, 17-10. Um, and in the first half, I think turnovers didn't, didn't help you either, 15 turnovers. Um, but you had a much better uh, second quarter. Um, I mean, you, you took the lead in the half finally, and you were down seven, seven points in the first quarter, 17-10. So basically, what did you say to your troops in, in the locker room? I said, look, the opening day jitters, uh, yeah, let's get them yeah, over with. They They're done, and yeah. let's just start playing basketball. Um, realistically, that kind of style should play into our mm -hmm. strength. Uh, it didn't in the first half. We got a little bit better as the game went on, but yeah. uh, it was definitely looked like our first game and their second game. Yeah, and your sophomore, Jovan Thomas, looked a little nervous, too. Uh, you know, he definitely a little, a, a little nervous. But your, your, senior, um, your senior settled you down. I mean, Andy White was, you know... He's like a, a consistent out there. You know, I think he poured in, what, 21 points for the game. So, mm -hmm. um, so coming down the stretch, uh, third quarter, you guys had a, he finally pulled away by seven points. And um, so 68-55, that was a nice win for you. Um, now, what kind of defense did you guys use in that game to, to counter Boomer's offense? Um, did you, were you throwing a two? Two three zone at him, even though he was throwing that man to man at you. I'm trying to remember yeah, now yeah, what we did for his game. Know, it seems so no, long know, ago now. I, know. Uh, I think we did a combination yeah. of man to man yeah. and some uh, two three zone in that game. I know you try different things that work, and sometimes right. you've got to switch back to. Right. I mean, we've been mixing in early in the season. We were mixing up our zone. We've been going more man to man now recently mm -hmm. in the last few games. So right. uh, hopefully we'll start to uh, d develop our identity defensively. Right. So, 1-0 and in the uh, South Coast Conference, and then we go to a non-league game. And a game that was coming up that was a little scary because you and I were both at the uh, sandwich Bonstable game. Sandwich played the uh, Bonstable Division I down in Sandwich. And uh, well, what a night Joey Downs had. Uh, their senior guard put in 36. And um, so... At your practice, the last practice before you guys got into that game, what was your plan on stopping Mr. Downs here? Well, at our practice, we had Darian Fernandes come in, who was home from Wyoming, <laughs> yeah. and he played yeah. the role of uh, Joey Downs yeah. for us. And so, uh, really? Yes. Wow. So our that plan was, was to uh, yeah. rotate yeah. three different bodies on him all night long for uh -huh. maybe a minute at a time and go a diamond uh -huh. in one defense. You and, must have uh, wore those guys out in practice, <laughs> <laughs> trying to follow Darian It's around. tough. I kept telling yeah. them, look, at, I yeah. have a lot of respect for Joey Downs. <laughs> I think he's a very good high school yeah. player, yeah. but he's no Darian Fernandes. Right. Um, it, uh, but yeah. I do think he's the best guard I've seen since Darian Fernandes in the last five years. Yeah, he's something and, uh, to watch. He, he's, re really he gave is. me some worries that game, but yeah. we really executed our game plan very well. I was really pleased with the effort in that game. We did everything we needed to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I still think Sandwich is probably the best team we played so far this year. Yeah, they're 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 a good-looking uh, ball um, club, and uh, they got a good coach, Dennis Green, nice guy. Um, yeah, and, and Andy White had a big game offensively. So defensively now, coach, you know, you got your plan set for Downs, the, their guard. They got two good guards, Reels and, and and Downs. I mean, you held Downs to five points. He he only scored two in the first half. That right. was amazing. What a job you guys did. But Scotty was hot, the other guard. But together. In total, they only, they only poured in 18 points, and that's low for those two guys. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pick yeah. your poison when you go a diamond in one. You've got to leave someone yeah. else open. And yeah. we said we'd rather have someone yeah. else on the team beat us than Downs because we, yeah. Downs can beat you in so many different ways right. with his passing, with his uh, shooting. Right. And so we took our chances, and it, it, it paid off in that game. 
And now that you mentioned the Diamond and One coach, let's for our viewers here, just give us a, about a minute of um, what you're doing Diamond and One with your players. Name your players right. on the Diamond and One, what so, you did against Sandwich. So here. in the Diamond and One, we put our center, Derek Garrier, at the bottom of the Diamond. So he's basically underneath the basket, and his job is to stay in the paint, keep the ball from going down low, and be a rebounder. At the top of the Diamond, we had Michael Labonte, who was at the, about the three-point line, between the foul line and three-point line, and his job is to stop penetration. Uh, on the sides of the Diamond that game, we had uh, Derek, I mean, uh, Jovan Thomas, Thomas the on one side, mm -hmm. and who would that leave on the other side? Um, Andy, White Andy White on the other side of the diamond. And their job was to double team uh, downs if he did get a ball on a pick and roll, to double team immediately mm -hmm. until he picked it up and then get back into mm -hmm. the diamond and give Matt Griggs or Xavier Foggy or Marquis Silva, the three people we had rotating on downs, a chance to get back on him. So, so you always had one guy on Joey Downs. Always right? one always, guy yeah. tried to deny him yeah. the ball everywhere. Mm -hmm. If he went for a drink of water, yeah. we told to get between him, <laughs> get between him and the bubbler. Uh, yeah. And we tried to do that all game, and uh, I, I think it worked. Yeah. He's a good player. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get frustrated, but he wasn't as effective as he's been before and since yeah. that game. I know, and he's been hot lately, so he guys dodged the ball up there. Now, in in that scheme that you were using, what happens uh, if he could get? Free try, obviously, they're trying to swing him over where he takes a, his best shot in, the, in either corner. Right. So you could have, bring that extra guy off the diamond and the double team him there when he... If he has... He, a, well, the idea, though, is not to yeah. let him touch the ball. And, and that's easier <laughs> yeah, said but, than done, but yeah. we did a pretty good yeah. job yeah, overall. Did. Yeah, he did. didn't have a lot of touches, right. but when he did, he but, made us pay. But yeah, uh, yeah. I thought Matt Griggs especially did a, yeah. a super job on him. And really, that's a good defensive player. He really is. Yeah. He's one of the best I've ever had. And you, you and I talked about him before. He, what he lacks in height, he's got a huge wingspan, mm -hmm. and he can jump. And like you said a couple of years to me, sometimes you take your best player, regardless of what his size is, and get him on a forward that's, that's right. going to kill you offensively and put that guy on him like Darian did so many times for you, right? Right. Yeah. No, Matt, yeah. Matt sacrifices yeah. his offensive game to help us defensively, and that's why he's a, a good captain for us as well. Yeah, in that game, um, the threes help you too. I think you guys hit nine three-pointers. Uh, Mike Labonte had six, oh, six of them. Wow. That was huge. That was his best yeah. game of the year. And, yeah. uh, that, that really made yeah. a big difference that game. And four in the second half when they tried to make a little run at you that was just too, too far to catch up. I mean, they, they made a nice little cl closing effort at the end, though. Sure I mean, did. They had, <laughs> they had a chance, and guess who had the ball there with the last shot, right? But, no, it was a great game. That was a great game for the fans. And... Um, Seeing Division Two sandwich, which is they should go pretty far into that tournament. I think uh, they, they got a good looking team. It's still early, yeah. Right. But um, yeah. <clears throat> so a big win, big, big win non non league. Now we go on the road. A rare Saturday afternoon game mm -hmm. to Bishop Stang High School. And uh, have you guys played those guys before in in the Not past? Not in my thirty years of coaching. As a player, I used to play against them, but okay. we haven't played yeah. in well over thirty years. In their coach. Um, his name is um, Colby Santos. Colby Santos, and some of the kids know him from AEU ball, right? Well, right. Colby yeah. played for me, and yeah. he was a volunteer assistant coach for oh, me. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. So he knows the Wayham program very well. <laughs> right. Okay. And they have a they have a couple of talented kids on that team. Um, Desmond Johnson, the senior, great player, and of course everybody's talking about the freshman Bryson Goodine. Yeah, um, he gave us trouble, especially wow. early in that game. You know, in the, in the first quarter, um, we've got. They got, they got 20 points. As a matter of fact, I think they had 8 or 10 on you before you guys got your first bucket, if I can remember. I know yeah, we got down. It's the second yeah. game. Uh, three games in a row, we got down early. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that was a concern. Um, and, yeah, they, yeah. they took it to us early. Right. We were out of sync. They played a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. Okay, uh, that's what I was going to Caught us a little yeah. bit by surprise. Um, and uh, we just did not – we didn't attack it properly, unfortunately. Yeah, so two questions there. The 1-3-1, one, one, is that the one that's been giving you trouble this year when you're seeing it? Um, well, that's the only time we've seen it so yeah, far this yeah. year, so it did yeah, give yeah. us trouble. But, uh, but in yeah. the past, it has yeah. given us trouble in the past, too, when we uh -huh. played Danvers in the Boston Garden. Right. They went a 1-3-1, one, one, and that's oh. actually where Coach Santos got the idea because he was an assistant on the bench yeah, obviously he's, that, he's, that time. So yeah, he's, it was he, a good move on yeah. his part. Um, yeah. And they opened up a big lead on us, but I, was, I, was, yeah. I, I liked the, the fight in us at the end, however. Yeah, they had a 35-26 uh, lead at halftime, so um, that was a concern going into the locker room. Now, the kid, the, the freshman, what did, what did you talk about in stopping him? I mean, he was making shots all over the place. I mean, what he could was. you do? We didn't have a good matchup yeah. early on, yeah. and we, so we switched personnel a little bit um, in the second half um, to try to take away his drive. He was hurting us on the drive initially, and uh, yeah. we he had can do to... It. I mean, he's, he hits the outside shot, and then he can... 
He can he can slash right. to he's the a, bat. He's, long, he's, he's a good he's yeah. a good player. He's a he's a yeah. nice player, but yeah. I think we'll do a better job on him second time yeah. around. And we got him at home too, which and is we nice. Do. You know, um, it's but a noisy I mean, little gym there. It is. It? It's yeah. loud. Uh, but it, it's, we went down 19 points oh. at the end of the third quarter. Yeah, uh, um, uh, nine, down 19 into the fourth quarter. At about uh, three minutes into the fourth quarter, you're still down by 19, trying to. But you guys had your best fourth quarter of the year. 27 points. You guys came back like a vengeance. Um, you actually cut into the lead with down to three points with a minute and six left. But the Gudine kid fouled out at, right. I think, the three-minute uh, mark. Mm -hmm. And then they lost their other kid, Desmond Johnson, at, uh, with about a minute to go. But you had two guys with four fouls. I think uh, Matt Griggs had four on him. Right. And um, maybe, Der I think Derek had four. So we had two guys that you know, you might have uh, lost if it went into overtime, which oh, it could have. I would have liked it to have gone into <laughs> overtime. I mean, but yeah, to go from 19 <laughs> down to have a shot at the buzzer to win it, we, we had a and, chance. We and, had a four-foot runner. Yeah, and actually, in my notes here, you had, you had, there were three turnovers there, right, in, the last, in that last sequence. One of the turnovers, you gave the ball back again. Right, which back, hurt, right? right. Another one, I think you missed a, a shot, and then you finally got some points on the, on the third turn, turnover. So you, when you got the ball again, it was a winnable game. Yeah, well, we had, that, our, yeah, we yeah. had our chances down the stretch. Yeah. We really did. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't. It's only a great comeback if you actually yeah. get that win. Yeah. Um, but I was proud that they didn't, they didn't give up, and they learned a lesson that uh, they have to play with that kind of intensity for a whole game. You can't know, turn you it can't, on. Can't, can't, uh, the fourth quarter every the game. The problem yeah. was we got an early foul trouble with Matt Griggs picked up two fouls right away, and so yeah, I had to take the press to, off, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is unfortunate because we're better yeah. when we press. I know, and you have to have him out here. I have to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's, a, he's the best defensive player, but, I mean, and I think that that's a good point. I mean, the kids didn't quit. I mean, a, t a, t a team down 19 points like that uh, with about uh, still, was it three, there's eight minutes, five minutes and change to go, and you think they'd, you know, but, I mean, that's a lot of points to make up in, in that it, amount of time. It is, it yeah. is. They showed some uh, resolve, a little bit yeah. of grit, which is always good because I, I question our toughness was the season started. And, mm -hmm. uh, but we still have to build on that, and yeah. it's still a loss, and uh, I can't be, I'm not happy with losses. Yeah. <laughs> no, nobody is, I guess. So there's a, a non-league loss there, and now we've got a, a tough game on Tuesday night against uh, that next Tuesday night. Fairhaven's coming to Wareham, and Fairhaven's 2-0 at that time, at that point. Right. They beat Aponiquit, which a lot of people consider that an upset, right? Yep. And um, you guys are still undefeated in the in the conference. So what was your plan against the uh, the, the Blue Devils there? Well, yeah. We know their style. We know they're mm. going to play all man-to-man. -man. Uh, we know <coughs> who their personnel was. Uh, so the idea was to try to get them going up and down as much as possible. They're mm. not comfortable in that game plan. We're better in that plan. We also put Matt Griggs on their best player, Cam Charette. Yeah, And I thought Matt one. did a nice job yeah. still uh, on a bigger player uh, for most of the game. Um, and I think we eventually wore Fairhaven down. Uh, it wasn't a pretty game, but I think we ended up winning by... 13 or 14 points, I think, uh, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And uh, anytime you get double digits over Fairhaven, it's a pretty good night. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, because the, the game that Coach likes to play, uh, Harding, Phil Harding, he likes to play that slowdown. You guys like to run. Um, yeah, Mac, Mac I, no, what was, uh, let's go back to, just be, go back here. Um, we're talking about Matt Griggs. Matt Griggs in the uh, Bishop Stang gang, and, uh, Stang game had his best offensive night in a Wareham uniform, 20 points. Right. I mean, that warm, that had to warm your heart. If you're a Matt Griggs fan, wanted to bring that up, he got 20 points in that game. As a losing cause, it would have been nice to win that game with Matt, you know, playing defense and scoring 20. Right. That was a big... And I think he had 11 in the fourth quarter, yeah. and uh, he ended up taking yeah. the last shot, and uh, we had yeah. we were running out of time, and mm -hmm. uh, he made a smart yeah. move trying to take it to the hole, just didn't fall. Yeah, exactly, and couldn't get the... Hopefully, he could have went to the foul line. Right. He's a decent free-throw shooter. It was a winnable game there, but now we'll go right back to the Fairhaven game at, at home there. Um, Derek Garrier um, is playing better defensively now for you guys. He uh, is. Getting involved. D yeah. Derek's like a quarterback yeah. on defense. Yeah. He talks all the time. He makes people sure yeah. people are in the right position. So I like yeah. the energy he brings. And um, and Andy White at 17 that game. Mike Labonte again pouring in four uh, three-pointers in the Fairhaven game. Um, finally, you come out of the first quarter ahead <laughs> 15 right. to 10. Right, and uh, halftime it you got a seven point lead, 28-21. Um, big fourth quarter again, 17 to 11, eight point difference, and so you pull away and win that game, 56-42. Mm -hmm. um, 
basically what kind of defense did you throw at uh, Phil Harding's team? Um, we went yeah, mostly yeah. man-to-man, man -to -man, man actually. We went back to way. them with man yeah. and just uh, tried to really do a yeah. good job on Charette. Uh, they had a player, Myers, I think, scored. Might have had a career high for them with 19 or 20. Matt points. Myers, yeah. yeah, 18. 18, yeah. 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 So, and Charette uh, had 16. So yeah. we didn't, weren't expecting that from him, but uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to uh, make Charette work and make someone else beat us. And uh, I, I was... It wasn't the prettiest game, but it was no. a satisfying win. And did you get a little worried? I think I've got here in my notes that at the 310 mark in the third quarter, they had cut the lead to three. So, right. you know, they were hanging in, hanging right. no, in. And that's what they do. But yeah. as long as we could get it up to five, eight, and then to yeah. ten, I felt, yeah. I felt better going down the stretch. Right. So now the big one comes up. Okay, we got a Saturday game. The girls and the boys are playing in the first and I think we've ever had, right? And yeah, girl, we're, we're at Old Rochester. We go up the road to Route 6 for a Saturday afternoon contest and undefeated South Coast Conference matchup here. And um, you know the, we just discussed this before we went on camera that the Raekwon Phillips boy quit the, quit the Old Rochester team. So um, you know this roster pretty well, some of the kids that played last year. What was your game plan coming into the Old Rochester game here? Game plan yeah. going in was to try to take their point guard out of the game because we talked about the freshman Noah Fernandez. Yep, yeah, who's a very he's a quality basketball player, and a lot of their offense ran through them, through him. And so our goal was to try to keep him very similar to the Joey Downs game plan, but we weren't going to diamond in one. We were just going straight man to man, man, to man. but deny him and play help defense with everybody else. And uh, so Mac, who, who had his responsibility? Matt Griggs, Matt, basically Matt primarily. And <laughs> yeah. Marquis Silva also came in and did a nice job on him and. If you had told me before that game that we would hold Noah Fernandez to two points, Old Rochester to 53 50, points, and not right. have problems with that 2-2-1 press, I would say, great, that's what we wanted to do. Unfortunately, we only scored 50 mm. points that game, and our offense kind of uh, failed us that game, and so they came up uh, win winners 53-50. Yeah, your offensive guys, um, Andy White only had eight, Michael Barney four, that hurt you, but your sophomore, Jovan poured in 19 points, big game for him. Um, and I think it's your best output from your bench. Uh, you got seven from Zave and Jason Morgan, too. So you had nine points from your bench. And um, so the Bulldogs, that 2-2-1 two, two, defense, huh? That, uh, yeah, yeah. But they didn't stay in it that long. We broke it yeah. early, and they got out of it. And <laughs> okay. they just went, and they actually, we were expecting 1-3-1, which they started the game in. Mm -hmm. But we went up 10-3, to three, and they got out of the 1-3-1 and went straight man-to-man. -man. So it was just man, they played man, we played man the whole game. Right. And again, that first quarter, 12 points. Um, you know, I've got some stats for you after we finish with this team. But anyway, Noah Fernandes, two points. You held him to two. And that, that is pretty good. But the Will Santos kid, 23 points. He's a player. player. Yeah, Will yeah. is a, he's a good athlete. He's yeah. energetic. He crashes the boards. He hit his foul shots in the mm -hmm. second half. And yeah. uh, that, he really helped them win that ball game. Yeah, and Jason Menard, we saw him last year. Jordan, excuse me, Jordan mm -hmm. Menard, we saw him last year. He's a good player, too. Yes, right? he is. Very yeah. steady. He's the glue that holds that team yeah. together, yeah. I think. So we got him at home next time. So that should be uh, a barn burner, so to speak, as we always it say. It was a crowd. It was <laughs> the biggest crowd they've had at Old Rochester in a regular season game. Uh, it was a packed house. Yeah, now I was online watching the, the stats because I was up north vacationing. And um, so I saw the back end of the bleachers come down. And they filled up that, too. And our producer, Christian Fernandez, said there were people sitting on the floor or standing up, right? Yeah. Standing room only. It was standing yeah. room only. So hopefully we're going to fill the gym when they come back to Wareham. Cause I'm that sure would be it's nice. I'd like yeah. to repay the favor. Right. Well, I got some interesting stats, Coach. And um, I have a feeling they're not going to be too good, <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, my producer told me to take it easy on you. But, you know, hey. Um, of course, we know we've been. You and I have been talking about this for a couple of years now. The first quarter scoring output output has been really, it's been you've been struggling. That's <laughs> in this year is no exception. Um, I've got here the first game: 10, 11, 15, 11, and 12. 59 total for 11.5 average. So that's the Achilles heel, and it keeps falling. Right, that's we got. Said. <clears throat> we got away with it in a couple games, but right. in the, in the, it hurt us in the stand game. It came yeah. back to bite us, which we knew it, it could have. We were better in the Fairhaven game. Old Rochester, I think it was, it, we didn't score a lot, but it was a close score at the quarter. Yeah, I think, I think it, yeah, exact, exactly. It was, uh, you had 12 in the Old Rochester game, and I think they had 13 or 14. It right. was very close. And, but, uh, yeah, so you've been outscored in the four, first quarter. That's the Achilles heel. Now, the good news is the fourth quarter. You guys had 23, 17, 
17, 27 in the Fairhaven game. Mm -hmm. Big output we just talked about. 16, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit in the first quarter output, but that, but 100 total for a 20.2 point average, which is, there's where your, right. your positive thing it comes from. But like you said, you can't go to that well all the time thinking that you're going to pull out the game in, that, in the fourth quarter, right? right? You've got to put it together for four quarters. Right. So we're, we've been stressing that in practice, and uh, hopefully we'll see better results tomorrow night. And we go back to the third quarter, sometimes you crawl into the game, sometimes you fall a little back, but that's not important. But half times, though, they're pretty much, pretty much even. Up one, even. Uh, that, that bad one, uh, minus nine. Uh, it's staying. Yeah, exactly. And uh, plus seven against Fairhaven. And, my, and it was a 28 to 27 halftime right up in Orr that we were just talking about. So... That, that is pretty good. So two, two of the losses, right, two of your losses, right, you've only you've lost by one and three. So those two losses, four points total. I mean, like you were saying in, the, uh, in your interview the other day, uh, after the OR game, that it was a winnable game, another winnable game. You played a bad first quarter and maybe third quarter, but still the game was, was there to win. It was, it was there, you, there yeah. for the taking. And, uh, but when you shoot 20 for 68, I think it was, for the game, we were 30% from the field against Old Rochester. So yeah, that's I think not going to get it done. 21 for 69 in field goals, 30%. Right? That was against Orr. And Orr, not much better. 21 still had, had the same amount of field goals. 21 to 57, 37%. So hit a couple more shots. Uh, you know, you win the game. 53-50, story, 50, story right? of basketball. But yeah. uh, is in, but we realize yeah. that, and uh, hopefully we'll learn from it and bounce back. We, but yeah. we've now given ourselves no room for ma margin right. for error. We got to win the rest of our non-league, uh, rest of our league games. Now, when you looked at the book a after the game, what was the uh, free throw um, disparity in they, that game? They, they, they actually didn't shoot well from the foul line. They were eight for twenty from the free throw line, uh -huh. and I think we were five for nine. Five for nine, so it was pretty pretty even percentage wise, right? right. So. But still, there was disparity there. They went to the free throw line more than more you. Than, more than we did. Yeah. So, but that means we've got to take it to the hole more. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't, you can't blame the referees for that no, one. No, I don't know. The referee has been good no. all season. I, that, they have been non-factors in all the games so far. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to bring that up. Uh, we talked about this uh, in the, our first show, and Harry Irving in our preseason show was saying that the referees, the way they were talking earlier in the year, the little clinic that they have, they were going to call it tighter, but we really haven't seen any... I think they've let them play, and it, the games have been, the games I've seen or yeah. participated have been well officiated, I've thought. Yeah, I've seen two other games besides the Wareham games, and I, have, I haven't seen anything different either. So I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, I think let so. Let the kids play, right? Right, let and, them play. Yeah, okay. And um, how about the defense? Would you, what would you like to see... Like we're only we're not even a third into the well, about a third of the way into the season maybe if you call want to call it that, have you been happy with your defense so far? Overall, yeah. yes. <laughs> I think our man defense has been pretty good, pretty solid this year for us, and mm -hmm. we're still improving on it. We work on it every single day, mm -hmm. um, but I, I would like to mix in more full court pressure with it, and so that's our game plan tomorrow night is to go a lot of. Uh, Full court, three-quarter court pressure, zone pressure, back to man-to-man. -man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd like to do, mix up our zone defenses and then go back to man-to-man -man defense. And the coach was talking about tomorrow night, and we've got two conference games this week. By the time you see this tape, it'll be over, but um, it's going to end December. We're going to be away at Dighton Rehoboth. Um, what do we what do we got to look well, for? Dighton's that won their team? last two games. Uh, they got some good size, decent size. Uh, good coach and Bill Cuthbertson. Uh, they're going to run all pick and roll offense against our man to man. I know that already. Mm -hmm. uh, we practiced that today. Um, but uh, they've got a point guy named Kineski, little lefty. This is the last of the Kineskis. There's been a million of them. <laughs> uh, but I think he had about 18 points last game and a big center. They hit four three pointers for him, Conlon. Uh, and so you, we got to respect his outside right. jump shot as well. Right. And then we're going to come back home with Seekonk. So um, hopefully we got two winnable games here. We can get on the track and stay one game behind or a born or whoever's going to come out on top after that matchup. Right. We've got to make sure right? we can still control our own destiny. The right. only way to do that is to, keep, right. uh, to continue to win. Right. So we got some interesting games to talk about the next time Coach and I sit down. So like always, Coach, thanks for coming in and spending some time with us. You're welcome. And off the court, I'm Paul Gagel. Our producer is Christian Fernandez. And tune in again next week for another edition of Off the Court. And thanks for watching.